Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm FN. And today, what's we're, up? We're doing, um, should we say to up? We're queening out. We're, we're being queening queens out today. for two, at least two, Evan, please. what does queening out mean to you? Great question. Queening oh, out is Sorry, what? Um, spring queening. That's what it is, right? Wait, what? The name of the retreat Hannah and Lorraine go on. No, I think it's just copy they use because then you look closely, it like starts with a D on all the robes. It's like, it's a word I can't pronounce. Oh. But I know, I thought it was spring queening, but then I kind of watched the episode looking for spring queening to be in the marketing material and it's not there. Period. This episode's like written by Tammy Sager, who I know from UCB Improv. <laughs> I'm like, I saw her at a Del Close Marathon in 2017. Okay, three people know what that is. <laughs> um, and that's for any UCB heads out there. I love Del Close. Um, he invented something called the Herald. Is that true? Yeah. I'm disgusted. Wait, I'm right. Um, he uh, doesn't even like to perform that much himself, but he loves to teach others. Can I just a little improv lore and then we'll get into girls and I'm so sorry. Was I right? Yeah. Um, there's also this guy called Armando and it's a oh, format right. where you give a monologue off the top and then you do scenes inspired off the monologue. And it was literally invented because this guy Armando is terrible to do scenes <laughs> with. So they're like, you know what? We'll let him talk off the top and then we'll do our stuff based no, on that. Oh my God. This is how I think my improv, um, my improv mates feel in my troop because um, the whole time I'm like, and I'm going to be a gay guy again. Sorry. Literally. Every single scene I do, I'm like, I'm gay guy. You have, they're always like, the recommendation are like canoe, people having sex in a canoe, people um, going for a swim. And I'm like, we're at gay guy camp every time we're yeah. at gay guy camp. The reason I quit improv was because I was like, I only want to play, I'm only interested in playing the character of me and right. I don't want to be on a farm. And I'm only interested in playing um, a gay trope that straight people love. Totally. It Wait, kills so Tessa hard. Bell used to have that amazing joke that was like, um, I, yeah, she used to do improv. Like, they would do scenes about a farm. Everyone's like, I'm a couch. She's like, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm the, the farm, farm babysitter, babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> which only works for maybe it works everywhere. But I'm like, also, you have to know a little bit about improv. Totally. And also us paraphrasing it on our podcast <laughs> really poorly. It might not hit for you guys <laughs> like it hit for us when she said it in real life. But trust trust you have to have trust because there's nothing more embarrassing than um, having to be something else um i've worked so hard to play myself don't make me lose that to do improv i'm like i barely know who i am but i know i'm doing her right exactly i'm gonna get froyo after this i believe i deserve it um Okay, my roommates and I love both of you are addicted to getting a froyo, even though Van Lewin sent us eight pints of ice cream. Oh my god, we have to say that Van Lewin is our first collab, um, <laughs> is our first time getting products sent to us, and we just want to say um, you guys are queens, and it's so cute, the little note they wrote about how they started out of a truck in Green. On Driggs. On Driggs, on Driggs uh, Avenue. Well, they started out of an apartment. Out of an there's apartment. a truck that's featured in an episode of Girls. Which we'll get pumped for. I want to say the vanilla... Van Leeuwen flavor is underrated. Like everybody's like, oh, vanilla is so boring. And I'm like, honey, I ate that with egg yolk. (laughs) I ate that pint in 12 minutes um, (laughs) or in in 12 hours. In I 12 like, minutes. I'm like, that's actually really long if you think about it. You could really finish that thing quick if you wanted to. I know, but you had to make it last. It's so rich. It's so it, rich. Us d- giving a minute of ad copy for that to them. <laughs> I'm like, we're actually nailing it. Um, No, thank you, Lauren, for sending us a best day of our lives. I also love the... Words of love. We got hats. We got hats. We got tote bags. Um, I'm definitely more excited about... Actually, you know what? I'm so not my hat era because for so long... When I was balding more and before I really got into hair loss supplements, um, I was like, I'm so hat forward. I'm so hat forward. But now that my hairline has kind of restored itself through the magic of dermatology, yeah. um, I don't want to wear hats because I'm like, I worked so hard to get here. I'm not going to cover it up. But all of last year, if you look back at this place, I wasn't leaving the house without a baseball yeah, cap. Yeah, you used to be so hot when I met you, and now you're curly hair god. Yeah, I'm curly hair. It's so important. Well, I want to say I had to bike my ass to Littlefield last Sunday for the Oscars event. Oh, yeah, we did an Oscars and event. And it, it, we had one day of warm weather the day before, so I was like, oh, it's surely going to be warm. And then I saw that it was going to be rain, a little rainy, but I was like, I'll power through because the only way to get from Bushwick to Gowanus is to bike. Um, <laughs> and is. I, of course, wore... <laughs> Or share an Uber. <laughs> yeah, or share an Uber. I wore the smallest dress with no pants, and I was like, but I'll stay warm pedaling across town in 40-degree rainy weather because I'll wear Uggs. With fur. With fur in them. <laughs> and so then my legs were freezing the whole time, and there was, like, little tricklets of rain, but because I wore my Van Leeuwen cap, 
I was you were protect. If I look down, it just hit. So literally magic. I um uh, no, go back to hats for a second. When I restored my hairline, posted a photo of the one year transformation on my close friends. All fourteen gay guys on there reached out with questions. What is happening? The male hair loss in our nation. I think it's is it actually, the food? Is it the farming? Okay, I so one. It's like actually a lot of men experience marital pattern baldness. Like it's actually just a classic thing that people go through. I do think it hits the gay community extra hard though. Like more well, gay men are losing their hair than straight men are. I also more think interacting. it's like women will date a balding man more than a gay man will. Is that true? No, because you know what? It's, women are actually picky about that. Women really care about bald except on love is blind. I'm Wait. Learning. Okay. Question for the room. So We're I'm listening. on I'm on two pay talk, right? And it's these girls who full time jobs are just putting two pays on young men and making them look really hot with their fake hair, even though they're technically bald. And I was talking to people about it, and they were like, "If I found out the guy I was dating was like that, I would literally break up with him." And I was shocked to hear that. Yeah, it's the catfishing of it all. People want you to be as authentic, quote unquote as possible but like you're telling so many lies while you're dating even if you don't mean to it's kind of just like self-defense of your image Mm -hmm. so it's like all these other things that are like personally about you it's like those people can get away with because it's like um they're not like it's not something on paper like it's like okay here's this like your personality affect is different here it's like and then it changes as you get to know someone like that's be called being comfortable taking your two payoff feels like a lie even though it's just you becoming more comfortable I'm just like I feel like the girls who are most picky about it are the ones that like do so much shit to their hair that they have to have a bunch of clipped in hair because all their hair is falling out. Oh right. So I'm like, this is um. Oh, extensions first to pay. Yeah, like I'm like, well, blonde girls with extensions and guys with toupees. What's the real difference? And it seems like the the where bar is different. It's where it starts. Um, like where the glue is attaches. Yeah, where the glue attaches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, no further questions on no that. Per- wait, it's I'm, like- I'm kind of thinking about dating now. Crazy, I brought it up. <laughs> 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 but I'm like, when I'm dating someone, and then I get further in the process, I stop talking in full sentences. But when we first start dating, I will give you a full sentence. I should get back out there. It's so hard. I'm just like really actually busy with my creative endeavors and no one's talking about that by the way. Sometimes if you have a passion, you can't have passion in your pants. Literally, and I'm like, I can have passion in my pants when I'm 30, right? Or is that wrong? But I also and this is something we can talk about on and off camera, depending on how you're feeling. I'm like also sometimes it's like you just have to break the reservoir. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like sometimes there's wall up and sometimes you don't know your form form like creating these walls around yourself. And once someone can, like, come in and, like, break a little bit of wall for you, then it's like, okay, now we can get the water flowing. Well, you know what? My hypnotist um, did tell me at doing my life You're reading. You're fortune teller or hypnotist? Okay, so this guy looks like a U.S. senator, but he actually is a, <laughs> he's a, um, a, what's it called, psychic mainly, but he does right. palm readings and he's also a hypnotist. And he did a life reading of my stepmom 20 years ago and all of it came true. So I really believe this guy, Joe. Um, but he told me that I would be falling in love in six months. So uh, stay tuned for September. I think we're really going to get into an interesting space there and I'm going to be open to opportunities then. Anyways, we're so excited to talk to a tiny Jewish girl. I, we already did. Um, and now we're recording this after. But um, she has so many fun things to say. And she's going to a gifting suite immediately after here. She's like, busy day. Got to go to a gifting suite. I'm like, you're living my dream. I really trust her whole vibe. Yeah, literally. I stalked her on TikTok this morning and I have a really good feeling about her. She's so kind. I mean, well, we can pretend we didn't have her already, but she is so kind and so sweet. And she's a perfect little face. I know. It's going to be, you guys are going to love the app. Okay, love. let's cross the soul. It's Clara, Clara Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Woo. Wait, we actually did such a good job with the last name. Yeah, wait, but we fully <laughs> peaked the whole time. Also known as Tiny Jewish Girl. Correct. Which is so, we were like, with that out, we're like, well, we have to get them on the pot. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. And here you are. Where do we even begin? Well, okay, first of all, where were you when girls came out? Um, I remember watching like the first episode with my older brother in my living room of my childhood home and being like, wow, this was really graphic and then (laughs) tabling it for a few years because I was too young and then coming back to it when I was in early high school. 
Oh my Ooh. god, the perfect time. The perfect time. Wait, that's so mature to be like, I need to take a step back, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then finally coming back. I didn't around really get to it. it. Like I just yeah, remember being really disturbed by the dynamic between Hannah and Adam. Literally, I think it's like kind of chilling the first pilot episode yeah. when you're just right. a little that's girl. Sexy. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever like read a magazine growing up where like I only looked at the images? It's kind of that kind of system. Yeah, for me when I watch yeah. Girls for the first time, like conceptually, I know what's happening on screen. Do I understand the context? Did I read the caption? No, I'm not there yet. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's y- you're New York born and raised, yeah. Um, an hour north of the city, not the city. Were you I always know. like, I've got to get my ass to the city as soon as I'm old enough? I think kind of yes. My parents met in the city. Um. My grandparents are from, like, uh, the Bronx in Brooklyn. It's always been a dream of mine to live in New York, and I ended up going to college in New York. Yeah, not to burst another bubble, but we have another NYU student on the pod. Okay, Shoshana. (laughs) Woo! I think we have to do a tally. Is this number, like, 10? I don't know. We try and get as many NYU as we can. (laughs) So we we can microdose us if we went there. Yeah, exactly. It was a substitute. We wanted, like, an honorary degree. In many ways, we are Gallatin. (laughs) We are I, Gallatin. I am Gallatin. I only learned about Gallatin from the TikToker Hoka girl, Kate Glavin. Oh, yeah, I know Ga- Kate, but I know Kate from TikTok. We didn't know each other at Gallatin because it is like if you're not t- doing the same type of major, you don't really know each other. Right. But then when we met from TikTok, I was like, you look so familiar. <laughs> and then we figured it out. You're like, oh, we oh, were you guys in made school. Took that, that made up class together. It's perfect. Someone had to. <laughs> Someone had to. Wait, so what was your little specialty? So I designed my major around uh, cultural criticism and creative writing, but like specifically around uh like media depicting the body oh my mm-hmm. god there's so many c sounds in that major <laughs> cultural criticism creative writing it's like it's a very harsh major <laughs> <laughs> i love huh. when you walk the stage do they tell everybody the name of your degree well i wouldn't know because i graduated during the pandemic and we didn't have a graduation oh my god were you 2020 no. um i was 2021 um no. And then I didn't go to like there was some Taylor Swift graduation a year later, and I didn't go to that because I had like. Were you say some Taylor Swift graduation? It wasn't the Taylor Swift graduation, by the way. I thought you were gonna be like, because I don't love her music enough. I'm like, okay, I'm not that annoying. Cut the camera. Um, It was so great having you. Um, No, that's so. Didn't her cat like perform at the graduation, or did I make that up? No, I just remember there was some quote from her about it's okay to be cringe. Or something you like that. You know what? Honestly, that's really she's empowering. So she's a genius. <laughs> he's a fucking genius. But I just saw Instagram stories. Like I was not there because I had a full time job. Right, and I love the concept because we're always like, you can't actually live life through social media, but you fully lived your graduation through ten Instagram stories. <laughs> You're like, I was basically finger. there. You're basically there. You're. Seat. I saw so many boomerangs. <laughs> I love it. Wait, okay. Well, today we're covering season five, episode five. Two, two no uh, what wait is wait it? clean for two clean days for two days but you mentioned before we recorded that you did write a full essay on the our next, next episode, episode. <laughs> what was your essay saying about panic in central park i don't we remember okay i remember that i got an a on it i remember <laughs> that i did delve into the controversy of like i think when i wrote it there was some shit that lena dunham was embroiled in and i delved into that but i don't really remember exactly what Mm. my thesis was other than that it was really fun to watch that episode like probably four times in order to write the thesis. right <laughs> i did have it memorized you know oh like i love you having to do a thesis defense on our couch that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> we should make all our guests do that yeah we should <laughs> i wonder what the controversy was i know there's one like, of 20 I'm there's sure. all that drama with love. christopher abbott being like i don't want to be on girls i'm too good for it i'm yeah, a real actor five i think it was kind of rock and v kind of or maybe like it was earlier rock and v what but so it was after this episode had come out. Like when I wrote this, it must have been 2018 or 19. Mm. Mm. Okay. You know what? And it's not for us to guess. <laughs> it's not for us to guess. <laughs> it's kind of it stayed in its time. Let's yeah. let it live yeah. there. <laughs> we don't. We don't need to backtrack. <clears throat> no, please. I never do. <laughs> I love it. Wait, I love. All right, guys. This is our minute to win it on season five, episode five, Queen for two days. 
Oh my god, who's doing a little road trip? It's Laureen and Hannah, and they are going all the way to do some spring cleaning at something called the ranch. No, it's not. Something similar to that. Um, Shoshana's in Japan, and she's working at a cat cafe, and who stumbles in? <laughs> her ex. Uh, no, her 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 ex boss that is. <laughs> and then by and then Shoshana's like, oh my god, Abigail, what are you doing here? I gotta take you out on the town, girl. And Abigail's like, okay. And they go get their feet eaten by fish. And then um they go out and Shoshana actually breaks down and she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. And Abigail's like, uh oh. And then cut back to Hannah. She's mad at her boyfriend Fran and she has lesbian sex with one of the people running the. Okay, finish this out. <laughs> um and then Jessa is hooking up with adam and jessica goes to see her sister to ask for tuition from grad school and jessa's sister turns her down because she always quits things so adam offers to pay for grad school boom literally we, and then we literally did it loreen really quick loreen decides not to get divorced and stay married to her gay husband dun, dun, dun. and that's one minute Wait, that was actually really good um what a crazy episode i don't really remember watching this the first time i do well so the reason i remember it is the person who hannah has lesbian sex with is played by this broadway actress lena hall and my um camp counselor was her assistant at the (gasps) time that this episode came out and i've hung out with lena hall since then oh Um, my god so she looks like a broadway star she has the craziest voice like she's really talented and she was in hedwig and the angry inch which i was Mm. obsessed with like it was hedwig was written by john cameron mitchell and at the time that this episode came out my instagram username was john cameron mitchell (gasps) Wow. So th- this, this is this legit. Stuck with me. We, yeah. They tie everything together so beautiful. I know a girl eating goji berries should play someone on Broadway. <laughs> Did what, you catch what that? What was her name in it? In no this idea, but she ate so many snacks. Holly? And her name was Holly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the name Holly. I would name a daughter that. <laughs> I would. One of them. Um, yeah, that is... F- we- it's been such a straight show for girls. Mm-hmm. The girls have been so straight for five seasons. But well, our, well I we guess have Marnie and Jessa. Marnie and Jessa kissing. They kissed, but it was for oh, attention. For, yeah, for attention with that guy, the the threesome. And Jessa ends up marrying yeah. Mr. Thomas John. So yeah, that was yeah. season two. Yeah, yeah. or season one finale is it the like, marriage, right? Yeah, so they did it like episode eight. Oh, yeah. early on, but it's been a while. Um. It is so... Have you guys ever been to a retreat like that? No. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> but you know what I was thinking about is like, I wonder if they actually had to go to a retreat to write that or if they were just like imagining what it would no, be like. No, Lena Dunn's been to a retreat like that. I'm like, there's no way she had to go. She's been a hundred times. She's I watched the inside the episode and Lena was like, me and my boyfriend, Jack Antonoff, um, went to a retreat hoping it would just be like a fun like relaxing like kind of romantic place and it was all divorces <laughs> that were 30 years older than them like trying to relax and eating like lentils and they were so weirded out and so that was like the inspiration well Amelia, have you gotcha. been to a retreat like this of course as everybody who's <laughs> been following along on the podcast i went on a random um yoga retreat this christmas mm. and it was me and then a bunch of like 40 year old divorces eating lentils for a week so this episode tickled me pink i was like this is exactly what my life was like in mexico for one week literally it was I, incredible well, i feel like a, a big thing i like the one woman is from westport which is like a very similar town to like where we grew up in westchester where it's like you really find this archetype of a mother who's like so health oriented that they've actually sacrificed everyone else in their lives to find inner peace through yoga or spin class where it's like they actually don't have the same um like um like they've given, they've spoke, they've done so much self care that's doing self harm to almost everyone else around them. Yeah, but also the drinking element, like that's kind of like squeezed in there. I I found mm. was also really true to that type of archetype. Like there was one character who says, "Give me a good book and a bottle of wine, and there you have it. Perfect morning." Yeah. And I like the perfect morning <laughs> that got me because like I knew so yeah. many moms like that. Literally. Yeah, kind of wake and wine. Well, like. <laughs> The, the town of Westport, where this mom was from, the one uh, Coco, the really fun one who's um, also a yoga teacher, uh, they had a scandal a few years ago where they had a liquor store. Do you know what nibs are? Mm-mm. So it's like the little bottles of alcohol. They're like one ounce. Uh-huh. So all they would always sell I them so, so, so quick. Squares. Similar concept. Oh, that's dips. That's dips. Dips. <laughs> <laughs> dips. Yeah. Those are awesome too. But, but they were selling out so fast. So those are like, what is the problem? 
all the moms in a carpool lane or like when they were driving their kids around, they just fill their purses up with nibs all day in the town of Westport. Um, because so they can never keep them in stock because it's all the mom's favorite thing because it's a little bottle, a little shop for them to go on the go. You're always hearing stories like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I don't know, should I share another antidote similar? Okay, and I will. So beautiful. In the town of Bedford uh, in Westchester, um, all these moms will do yoga class. And then um, I knew a fitness instructor who was teaching one of them. First week, they all were like, she had to serve wine after the yoga class. Second week, she's like, why are they all doing coke after yoga? All these moms have like intense coke problems. They do yoga, they pick their kids up, and they do a line. It's kind of like their whole thing. I don't think that's wrong. I think it's so cool to be a woman that does yoga and hard drugs. Yeah, balance. It's called balance. (laughs) Goop would have something to say about that. I know. I'm like, get (laughs) Gwyneth in here. I want to hear her hot take. Please. Have you heard of Canyon? It's like, this is very Canyon Ranch oriented. Yeah. Yeah. It's so... Um, spring queening. It's like, I want to go to there when I they're know. like dancing and they're like lead with your cunts. I'm like, this is the moment. I know. I like vernacular made for women that are trying to be free and cunt is like, they're like, we're reprising this word. We've reprised word in a completely different way, which is awesome. Yeah. The way they're saying cunt, it's like, this is female. We're leaning in Sarah Sandberg kind of vibes. <laughs> I mean, from the start, I mean, the first scene is like them showing up and them being like, oh, orientation was supposed to start 10 minutes ago. And the orientation leader is like, yeah, and none of you did anything <laughs> like as if they were supposed to. I'm like, like trap. Yeah. Well, OK, we're getting so into the subject. I know, we're but getting... now we have to ask a really crucial question. Girl, girl what, what girl, girl are, are you? you? my worst i am hannah and at my best i am shoshana i like to you know she has like a growth arc mm. unlike kind of everyone else and yeah. i i like to think that i also have a growth arc but i'm also like <laughs> like the high strung jewish girl and yeah, yeah, student yeah. you know that resonates but when i was younger like i mean i studied writing and i wanted to be a writer and i think like when i think first episode hannah's like I might not be like the voice of my generation, but I'm a voice or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, red. I've been red. <laughs> right. You're like, I definitely am gonna talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I got, I got, you know, also like with Sex in the City, like I'm not just one. Like I am Carrie at my worst, but I, I like You're to, multi-hyphenate. I like to, I like to think that I'm Miranda at my best. Mm. You know, so. Mm. Miranda at your best yeah well like those words are rarely uttered I know but like but not like and just like that Miranda like she's very pragmatic she's got Mm. like she's in they're all just like motivated by insecurities as as with girls as with (laughs) kind of girls the show girls in general well just to loop that back in everyone and their mother has been telling me the same sentence which is um we're exactly the same time uh we're the same spacing and time from when sex in the city came out to when girls came out so now everyone's writing a pilot that's similar to girls because they're like, it's finally time. So I'm really learning a lot about what people think girls would look like in 2024. Totally. It's an exciting part. Yeah. Totally. It's a lot of like things you would never think would make sense. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to like name drop anything, but it's like some of them are bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um. Why do you think you're Hannah? Um. Well, I think sometimes like... Like in this episode, the way she spoke to her mother, I was like, mm, "Oops." Like, are yeah. you and your mom close? Like we that? are close, but then then I'm like, "Stop! Like, leave me alone!" Like, you know, yeah, like the classic like Jewish mother daughter dynamic. Um, and then also like I feel like I'm dramatic. I'm also like we're kind of mentally ill in similar ways. Mm. Cheek. Um, and like I think like self involved in similar ways and a little like. Mm, I don't like I don't want to say like I'm self-important but I have moments where it's like where like everything else like you you lose perspective on everything around you and totally you just kind of and you're self-aware it sounds like yeah (laughs) I try to (laughs) be we're getting um I do love the whole thing you're talking about like the Jewish trope of like the way people talk to their mothers because I mean, Amelia could testify to this, but when I, when I talk to my mother on the phone, it's like the things I say to her are horrendous, but it's only because I love her so Yeah, deeply. exactly. <laughs> we're just friends. We're yeah. friends like that. Like, we're lovers and we're haters. Yeah, but are your friends around you shocked by yeah. um, the way oh, yeah. you speak my, to your my mother? My boyfriend, too, because my boyfriend <laughs> is not Jewish. And, like, yeah, I yeah. think the first time he heard me, he's like, what the fuck? Like, he, <laughs> he loves his mother and he would never, like, even yeah. curse at her. 
or he never say like fuck you mom like 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 the way my mom and i can argue like like we're the only i'm the only person in our my family who is capable of arguing with her and like we we just like are very similar Mm -hmm. and we can like keep up with each other most people can't argue with me and most people can't argue with her but we can argue with each other and yeah anyone who's ever witnessed that has been shocked <laughs> i'm always shocked at the way evan says things too it's because i love her so deeply uh, yeah, exactly. that i can We're say the worst things like, ever i didn't know that's what love looked like but <laughs> go off um i it is so interesting like loreen also shares so much emotions and like what she's going mm. through with her daughter in a way that i'm like that's not my experience like do you feel right. like your mom is like emotionally like real with you in a way that you're like somehow responsible for no i don't think but well like she'll be she'll be open with me but she doesn't put anything on me like if she was Mm. my parents are together but if she was getting a divorce she wouldn't be asking me what she should do right yeah it is interesting to like watch lorraine be like should i divorce tad and hannah's like i don't know and she's like the sex actually hasn't been so bad and hannah's like okay it's better (laughs) all right well i do think it's interesting that like I think the trope is like a lot of kids are put in the middle of their parents' divorce, but it's interesting to see it at such a stake where it's like she's so separated from her parents, like 25, living in New York City, and still being right in the middle of like her parents' divorce, even in a way that her parents aren't touching. Like she is such a mediator for what their communication is. I'm like, that's that's the definition of difficult. Oh, love. Yeah. Did you feel like you're in the middle of your parents' divorce? <laughs> yeah, and of course, and I'm famously a mediator between them. Yeah. Well, um, then let me lead you into a question. Girl, what girl are you? <laughs> this is actually going to change the course you're of our conversation. Shoshana. I am so Shoshana yeah. this episode. So Shoshana has been in Japan now. She got laid off from her job. She got a new job at a kitten cafe and she's been romanticizing it. She's like, I don't want to go back to America. I hate it there. I love Japan. And then it hits her like she's alone in a foreign country and she actually feels really profoundly lonely and lost and confused (laughs) and has no idea what she's doing. And it's like, that is so me. I grew up in Texas and then I moved to Toronto and then I moved to LA and then I moved to here. Like I'm kind of addicted to moving to a new city and being like, really like every time I move to a new city, I treat it like it is like Katy Perry's vagina. Like (laughs) I'm like, Oh my God, everything's so cute and magical. And like when you first move to a place, like everything just is so like new and exciting. And then it's like, it wears off like month three and you're like, who am I? What am I doing? Like, am I miserable? So I relate to show so hard. It's like her being so like fiercely, like in the Japan episode specifically, she's like, I love it here. I'm never leaving. Everything's perfect. And then we kind of see her in this episode, like break down and be like, wait, I actually feel crazy. I know. Cause don't we all perform? Isn't life living to perform? Say that. Yeah. yeah. Have it's you a- been to Japan? No, I haven't. I've always wanted to go. Like you would kill fashion, in Japan. Fashion wise, I'm obsessed. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like you would do well there. Yeah, you define fruit magazine for people. I'm living obsessed. In East yeah, I have, I have like old fruit mag, fruit oh, magazines. Of course. <laughs> I love the inspo. I love it's it. It's so inspo. I mean, what is that district that they're in where everyone? Harajuku, is, it's Harajuku. It's at the district. I think so. Yeah. It is so. When a girl has pink hair in the background, I couldn't stop looking at her. Cause you know what it is. It's um, it's like now that's actually so much more of a typical thing you'd see online. And Japan was kind of just so ahead of the curve. But like before that, the only exposure we had to people with like crazy pink hair were like drag queens. Well, so and- I had crazy pink hair in high school, and this oh, was really? be- this was before like everyone had crazy hair and like in a small town a jewish town in westchester i was like ostracized but people eventually came around and like this is really cool and then like all the younger kids in my town started dyeing their hair (gasps) and so i like i definitely relate to that little oh my god for you to find community it was in japan the whole time no (laughs) (laughs) wait evan what girl are you also can you hold it down here you're popping um okay i think number one I think as a joke answer, I'm Sam. Sam's the gay guy uh, who works at the Brandon Wellness Scott Retreat. Jones plays Brandon him. Scott Jones. Um, the way he walks away when Hannah kind of disses him, when she's like on her phone still after he like told her to stop doing it, when the lesbian yoga instructor is like, you can do it. And the way he like moves his hands, I'm like, oh, you're copying me. You're making fun of me right now. I feel like you would never I tell a girl like Hannah that. Horvath to get no, off no, her no. phone, though. No. <laughs> I'm so into people breaking the rules, and that's actually the second part of my thing where it's like, 
I would be so hand on that wellness retreat. Like, absolutely. I thought bread was a nut. Um, I'm having so much fun. Oh my God. When my Hannah mom. spits out the croutons and is like, <laughs> sorry, I thought these were nuts and I'm actually um, allergic to bread. <laughs> Girl. She's so funny. Like, I am going on a hike in my bathing suit. And sorry, I'm going to talk to my mom. Like, you know, I'm I'm kind of, it's fun to like go to a space and then absolutely not respect anything. And I've only learned that with age. When yeah. I was a kid, I was so respectful of everything. But the older I get, the, like the less respect I have for traditional rules. Wait, LOL. may I just say, like, I'm Please. thinking back on it. And we talk about going places with your mom. I used to like, if I was homesick, if I was like ever not doing anything and my mom was doing something with her friends, I would always tag along. That's another <gasps> Hannah quality of mine. Like my mom would be like, oh, like you 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 are on antibiotics but you're not feeling well why don't you come to lunch with me and my best friends at like at like some Literally. like little cafe like you're not going to school so just come to lunch with me i like, love the idea girls. that your mom's like i'm gonna bring my sick daughter <laughs> uh hope you don't mind they're like okay well i was hoping to <laughs> no they'd be like we love clara we love hanging out she's no, one of the parents girls. love young energy yeah I like anytime I go to my parents' like dinner parties with no other kids, just me. I like they loved it. They were eating it up. They're like, "What are you majoring?" And I'm like, "I'm in sophomore year of high school." Yeah, <laughs> but also like my mom has a lot of like uh, daughterless gal pals, and so I'm it was like the ultimate daughter. Like they yeah. like I loved fashion and all that stuff, and they like give me their hand me downs, and like we'd be girls. <gasps> I'd be like a surrogate you daughter. Get hand me downs. Wait, that's heaven to have a bunch of motherless mothers adopt you for a day and yeah. be like, "You're my yeah. daughter." You have everything. I love it. <laughs> okay, leaning into Lena. This is a segment where we think about what that girl was thinking. There's, I, that girl's brain is crazy. This episode. I know. Where should we start? What, what plot? Hannah and Lorreen. We're talking so much about Hannah. Let's just finish it off. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's slay the drag. So I think we need to discuss Hannah hating her boyfriend Fran so bad that she'd rather be miserable at a queening out retreat than speak to him. <laughs> Yeah, but don't you think it's so fun to be miserable? Like, wouldn't you love to go somewhere with your mom and be in a bad mood the whole time? That's yeah, so that, fun. That, again, that's very Jewish. <laughs> 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 like, you want to take everyone down. <laughs> yeah, I will say once my mom made me go on this cruise and it's like, she's like, you should be so grateful. But she initially told me I didn't have to go. And so then on principle as a 13 year old, I was like, well, I have to be an evil bitch the whole trip <laughs> because like... I don't know. I, you have to. You have to. Yeah. And it was like so fun to just be like pouting and being like 12 and being like, fuck everybody. you can't everybody. do that in your everyday life. Like you have to be so reasonable and kind to everyone that you're like the same age as. Otherwise, they won't respect you or care about you. When you finally get a chance to let loose and be a little like mean little girl, it's like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. It's that. so fun. Like my family trip to London. I feel like I was I just got my first period. And my, <gasps> and my dad wasn't there. And my older brother wasn't there. It was just me, my twin and my younger sister, and my mom. And um, every single picture I had like side bangs. And every single picture my side bangs were like in my face. And I'm just like. <laughs> like can you smile for one? And I you're like, no. <laughs> exactly. Like my mom would just be like, Clara, please. And I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> was your hair pink? Uh, no, this was pre pink hair. I was in middle school. Hair, the pink hair was early high Did school. Did you have the crazy swoop side bangs? Oh, deep side part, yeah. Period. And they were like grown out, so they're just in my eye. <laughs> I had one eye that whole trip. Were you a, a hot topic person or not even? No, I mean, at the Galleria. I mean, I was. I feel like I was a Westchester Mall girly, and I don't think they had a hot topic. The Galleria had a hot topic. Yeah, Westchester Or Spencer's, didn't. and then the Westchester didn't. Amelia had to go to the Westchester by herself one time to return jewelry, and she yeah. learned so much there. I learned a lot. <laughs> I will say, so I have a sister who's 12 right now, and she's in her hot topic era, mm -hmm. but my dad is like, took her on a shopping spree. I made her go to Aritzia first and buy a normal top before I would take her to the hot topic. <laughs> I think that's so funny. Well, so I was really into like, the band nirvana and like grunge and all of that stuff so i didn't really dress in like the hot topic like goth type thing like i was mm -hmm. more like vintage t-shirt like i would wear my Ooh. dad's t-shirts like big flannels from my brothers like grunge or You're like so Seattle. Kind of, i was so kind chic. of also into like tumblr so there was you know the grunge the tumblr version of grunge i was kind of grunge tumblr yeah. yeah i'm sure scott pilgrim was huge for you 
Honestly, I've never seen it. No, you're that- kidding. Okay, when you get home today, <laughs> I know, check I know, it out. Boyfriend, you're going to love it. My boyfriend obviously had a crush on Ramona. No. I was like, and he's like, how can you like not have seen this movie? Like, that is Wait, new. you so actually new. have to leave this house and go watch it <laughs> I later know, today. I know. Sometimes like I avoid seeing things that I know are going to influence me for no particular reason. Right. You're like, well, I don't want to change. I'm not ready to be fundamentally changed today. <laughs> okay, when you're in the mood to be fundamentally changed, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull Pilgrim <laughs> Post world kind of clear over the world it. have you ever had a boyfriend um period you <laughs> yeah <laughs> have you ever had a boyfriend that's really nice and you're like fuck off i hate you ass. so never boyfriend but i've had guys interested in me who are really nice and it always is like i'm like no like my boyfriend i love him he's so sweet but he's also grumpy and like i feel like you need to have some like there needs to be give and take because i'm not always nice yeah and like if i was just being like super not nice to someone who's like so so nice i would feel like a terrible person i feel like there needs to be like yeah like they need to be a little be able to dish it back out oh. yeah or else or you're call like call me on my shit because i like i don't want to be with someone who can't call me on my shit and who um is just like so nice to the point of being boring you know what yeah. i mean yeah i think that's what happens to every girl I know, but actually not every girl, by the way. There's so many people in scary relationships. I got, I just don't know if I've ever talked to a girl that's like, I love a nice guy so much. Yeah, actually only the mean ones kind of have boy- girlfriends. Aren't we learning that? Yeah, that's uh, kind of famous. Famous. Um, It is cool that the whole episode, Hannah's like, I hate him, I can't stand him, whatever. And then she has like sex with holly and then immediately is like freaked out by the experience and is like never mind i'm gonna go back to fran and feel normal like it's such a girl being like i want to be different i want to be free from the shackles of this nice guy and they do something different and then they're like never mind i actually want to be so basic no but don't you need that experience like don't you have to have, have almost full sex with a lesbian in a sauna who eats goji berries to be like you know i feel bad to feel guilt that's the only way you know i didn't register until like right exactly now that she cheated on him like i don't know what Fully. i did <laughs> no but the thing that. is because it's gay sex. i actually didn't either <laughs> yeah i was like it doesn't count it, it counts she cheated on him well, no like it doesn't count by, because yeah. she was eating her out and was like never mind i have to go no because bi <laughs> girls get to be open for free especially because our first sexual experience legally legally they get to be open and it was right cheating. she's like obviously i'm not what did she say i went to oberlin Oberlin, i'm not a monster yeah (laughs) (laughs) but i guess she it was like the most sexy amount yeah i did have to skip through these sex scenes because i watched this uh, in the library and the first rule when you log into the wi-fi is no porn and i was like i've seen so many hysteric men watch porn here but you know what i'm not gonna break the rules today is that a rule if you do the Wi-Fi, the BP Wireless, um, which is a free Wi-Fi at the library, the first rule is no porn because it's such a big problem because so many Hasidic men will go to the public libraries in Brooklyn in particular and watch porn because they don't have computers really at home in the same way. So you're like, it's like it's a porn factory at times. I will say, I'm like Bukaki, girl on girl. It's oh like you're, it's gonna get all the way down the line. Are they like jerking off or they're just watching it? No, they're like in their hats, their big coats. It's 85 <laughs> degrees out. Two girls kissing. <laughs> That's uh, epic sauce. Yeah. What just we talking committing about? it to memory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, I have to say because you brought up library. Um, a librarian named Shoshana sent us tiny oh furniture God. DVD from her local library in Michigan. Um, last summer, it used to be on streaming. I remember when I, I watched know. tiny furniture, it was on streaming. Yeah, well, we she wanted us to see the bonus features. Oh, and then we, we wanted to, to, which we didn't get around <laughs> to. Was it like a DVD situation? It yeah. was a DVD situation. But I just want to say to all the listeners at home who have been following along the journey, I have sent the DVD back to Shoshana, and she will be. She will. It did cost a, a lot more than the price of the DVD. <laughs> but um, thank you, Shoshana, for letting us borrow it. And Love you. Uh, cut back sorry i just had to get that out um <laughs> so are fran and hannah gonna stay together what do we think do you think she should tell him well, about holly no right no because they don't have a future like she, <laughs> she knows what's right she doesn't like it's like no, it's like they, <laughs> she doesn't really owe him that much like right you know he's the grammar police she yeah. doesn't owe him anything <laughs> 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 that's so funny well then it's kind of an interesting parallel to watch her mother like who's been hurt so bad by her husband actually being gay 
she's like, and you know, I'm still going to stick around. And like Fran, what did he do? Correct some emails and be weird. It's like, okay. So it's yeah. really interesting juxtaposition to like have these two conflicts of relationship where Hannah's so active about, about being like, I can't be in this relationship. I'm going to now go cheat on my partner. And Lorraine being I like, I have to sacrifice that. everything. And then kind of like try to like balance each other in this setting. What do you think about Lorene? So Lorene comes on the trip and she's like, I need to go on this trip to figure out if I'm going to divorce my gay husband. Mm. And then she goes on the trip and she's hearing the stories of all these women at the table. And then she brings up my husband's gay. Like, here's my baggage. I and need to hear about your sick lunches if this ties into that. <laughs> yeah. Does, was this what the moms were gabbing out when you were sick with a cough? <laughs> um, They would keep it. They would keep it kosher. Like we kind of like <laughs> my mom and her friends are all like my mom has two Ivy League degrees and her friends are all into like mid-century modern design and oh, all this perfect. stuff so they talk about I, like I uh, like i don't know literature fashion art so not as much about portobello first. mushrooms yes. women desserts. with degrees don't have kids that's what we're learning sorry <laughs> you said they were all mother they didn't have any kids no no no. they were daughterless they, had they were sons. daughterless they had sons. oh i'm so sorry i miss i'm like the only child you could have is a daughter the only one i respect legally <laughs> <laughs> not you being like if you're too smart you can't be a mother um but that's actually kind of hard sometimes too um girls can have it all no no they rarely can though they can it's just really hard yeah for sure um yeah do you think it's normal that everybody at the table was like i prefer if my husband was gay it seems a little bit dismissive no yeah but i feel like that's just the world like the world of the yeah. show where like these these divorcees or like we're like oh my god it'd be better if my husband was gay so i wouldn't have to have sex with him and i wouldn't have to worry <laughs> about him like liking and, you know like i feel like yeah it's also I, th I think it's supposed to probably be a reflection of women of that generation maybe well I totally think it's also a conversation of like um wealth a little bit too yeah because these are clearly like all really wealthy women who've been to a hundred of these retreats and like they're like we want everything to be so copacetic amazing on paper like a gay husband actually fit really well into our formula because like what we don't care about is like love and intimacy what we care about is like having this really nice like aesthetic life that like really fits into what we perceive as like great family where lorraine is like i guess that's kind of what i want too is just everything to feel okay and not have to struggle because she's had to already struggle so much with this whole gay thing. Where it's like, I guess at the end of the day, being gay isn't really that big of a problem. In the sense of like not wanting to struggle. But she's someone who you can really tell wants intimacy and love as well. Yeah. Where it's like these other women don't value that as much at yeah. the table. Totally. And what is Lorene's monologue at the end is like you know what like if i like maybe if it was 20 years earlier but what am i gonna do now find a guy that i don't know that much about and marry him and have like two years of sex and then d have a catheter yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's like she brings up an amazing point i think if i was in her position it's like yeah i would stay with what i know especially since it's not like tad some evil guy like it's like they work as life partners they're having more sex than ever and they Literally. have a friendship yeah, they have a friendship. It's like, why throw it all away for some rando on Match.com? I would never. I would love to marry a woman. <laughs> and I would love to marry a gay man. Yeah, it could be perfect. Yeah, I'm like, it actually makes a lot Every of sense. Every time we're in public, Amelia's like, I think finally she's like, I think that guy's hot. I'm like, that's a gay man. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I'm always like, that one has to be straight. They never, never are. are. <laughs> You'd be perfect for this role. Uh, I know, but you know what? It kind of gets a little um, S.A., in parts of it in the sauna scene with Holly. Oh, which yeah. Like, Keep eating me out. Oh, yeah. And like Hannah's pushing, like, pushing I, her head down. Yeah. Hannah's like, I cannot breathe. I have to go. And it's like, uh oh. Holly, yeah. Holly finishes or whatever. And Hannah's just like putting her clothes back on stressed. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> do you think, huh. do you think Holly, when Holly was like, oh, I'll stretch you out in the sauna, she was like, I'm going to make a move? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, right? Yeah, because, I mean, it seems very calculated the way she drops Hannah onto her. Like, mm -hmm. and it, like, I mean, she, she like, takes an interest in Hannah, Hannah from the start. Like, like, comes up, defends her, whatever. And then also, remember, she's like, oh, I've never 
hooked up with a student before. Like that feels like a line. And then Hannah says, what? Oh, you don't have to say that. Yeah. She's like, I'm actually <laughs> fine. If you told, told the truth, no worries. I guess it is like the initial time she comes up to Hannah. Her body language is literally like pussy out. Like she puts her leg on a chair in front of yeah, her. And she's yeah. like, you can keep your phone all you want, girl. You're yeah. free to be you. <laughs> calls like, her luscious calls her luscious uh-huh it's very sexual forward yeah yeah and i think to your point it feels very calculated the whole drop of everything but i did think it was interesting that um hannah made the first move yeah well they were they had their faces up against each other for like many seconds before Hannah yeah. makes a move yeah huh huh something to think about I, it must have, I feel, I feel like it's all, there's every show about a girl in her twenties, she's kissing someone in a sauna. Well, I think the interesting point here is also that like the show like this, um, I think traditionally, like you don't think of women having like this I, back to your point earlier with like the whole sexual assault thing. So for Lena to describe this through the angle of like a woman who's being really sexually forward and like kind of almost crossing a line as well, I think was a really interesting thing to put on TV. Totally. I also think like at the time it was probably less of her writing it like that mm. just because we hadn't really like had that discussion. Like I mean, Pretty me too. Yeah. Like, but also the conversation I think around sexual assault with millennials was different mm. than like the conversation with Gen Z. Like I feel like the, the way we were educated about it changed and like the whole no means no conversation and all of that, like, developed over time totally because if we think back to that episode on all fours millennials when they watched it weren't like this is rape they were just like oh that's like not ideal whereas like now when gen z people watch that or like when we covered that episode like everybody in the tiktok comments were like that was literally rape and it's like i feel like the like our generation views it differently than yeah but also i feel like this sex with hannah and adam in the first episode wasn't didn't some unconsensual stuff happen there I mean, maybe that was more intentional, but, like, I think he... It wasn't... Yeah, but it's always, Adam's always, like, tilling this line, yeah. I think, as part of it, and, like, that's part of his, like, sexual prowess. Like, something very similar happens here with Jessa and Adam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like, they're having sex, and he's like, and now my role play is going to be, like, you not respecting my boundaries and actually going to come inside of me even when I say pull out. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting thing where it's, like, to go back to your Me Too conversation and, like, the all-around consent, like... That kind of role play totally still exists, but it's like I think the um, taboo of it all would be like much greater. And like I think you would really have to like in some situation. I mean, it depends, of course, on relationship, but like that's just a really interesting role play. Yeah. Yeah. Because rape fantasies are like really still so popular, but like so the kind of consent of it all. You guys have probably rewatched everything more recently than me. Does Adam do a similar role play with Hannah at some point earlier in the show? Something kind of similar, maybe talking about coach or like, oh, you're, or maybe it's like you're a street teen or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you're a dirty street hooker. Right? Yeah, definitely. Took you home. And also, I think in like the second or third episode, there is the plot line of like Adam removing uh, a condom, right? Mm. And Hannah oh, yeah, being, exactly. Like, oh, there's the, yeah. it actually happens. And then she's like scared she has HPV and she does. Yeah, all adventurous women do. Yeah. I, Cause I think I think like the parallels between that sex scene with um, Adam and Jessa and like actual things from Adam and Hannah's relationship is interesting. Cause obviously there's like the whole just the whole uh, dividing of um, Hannah and Jessa and like this is kind of where that's happening. Like I think in the yeah. the previously on girls like I didn't watch the whole rewatch the whole season, but didn't they just have that falling out recently? Yeah, rice to riches. Um, and yeah, so Jessa's like. Oh, I'm pulling away from Hannah so I can have Adam. Mm. Well, let's dive into Adam and Jessa. So this episode, what we see from them is them having in a very like honeymoon stage of like sex where they're both so like obsessed with each other. And then Jessa's like, my sister Coco's in town. I'm going to go to dinner with her. Do you want to come? And he's like, yeah, totally. So then they go to dinner with her. And then Adam's Wait, like. I don't know his sister's name is Coco. That's the yoga girl for no wellness retreat. Oh, uh, what's the, she has like she name. has like a fall name, but Jessica calls her short an abbreviation of yeah, the full name. Yeah, I can't uh, remember. Well, who's we'll the just actress? Say Jessica's sister. <laughs> yeah, I won. I wonder. I was curious if it was. It's like me. Is it Mimi or something like that? Yeah, it's something, something where it's, it's two letters that repeat, no. right? 
I'm gonna look it up, but yeah, there's Coco, we got Mimi. We're having fun. Well, I know um Jemima's sister in real life's name is Lola. Lola? I don't think it's Lola though. Lola the DJ. So I think it's like something like sidestepping that. Um, but anyways, they go to dinner, and as we said, Jessa is trying. So Jessa, of course, if we remember, got cut off from her grandma. Because she left rehab instead of graduating rehab. And so she actually needs money. And she's asking her sister who has all the money in the world from their grandmother for it. And her sister's like, no. Literally, girl, you killed it. (laughs) What do we think about that? Like, wait, do you have some? Yeah, I'm one of four. Okay, period. Well, yeah, I I like the whole half sister of it all. And a whole, like, they've all slept with the same person. Yeah. (laughs) Except except Jess's father. Except for Jess's father, because they're not blood. Well, yeah. she's obviously blood. yeah, but yeah, yeah, the yeah. sister isn't. <laughs> and I love that she's Scottish. They're like, well, how can we make Jess a little different? Like, almost everything's the same except she's Scottish. That's so fun to me. But it's said, this girl, right? Yeah. yeah, Mimi. Mimi. Her real name is Minerva. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyways, sorry, we had to get that. No, we had to get the audio waves. So Mimi is kind of a bitch. Uh, Yeah, but also she kind of, I mean, it's not like Jess is perfect and she kind of is real with Jessa. Like she's like, you quit everything. Like you don't have follow through. You, the reason you're cut off is because like you didn't, you were irresponsible or whatever. Like you, and she was, she left rehab. She didn't finish it out. And then what'd she say? You should hide your drug use better or something like that. I mean, that, yeah. that was like, she's being a bitch, but also in some ways she was just like, it was a reality check. Like, Literally. like if your sister who, who has not, your younger sister who's failed on everything she's ever done in her life ask you for money like a ton of money to do something that she's not, probably not gonna finish like what like what would you say i am a bitch so i would say no yeah um, yeah i'm in a similar i'm like i wouldn't say yes to jessa if she keeps like i mean she keeps bailing on everything yeah like that's not a, a wise investment especially it's like you're risking all the money you have yeah from your grandma but now she also has i love the whole line where she's like yeah, the trust fund doesn't count to my income, so I still get a <laughs> <laughs> matrimony. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like getting divorced or something. It's matrimony like payments. We're obviously establishing that she's no angel either. No, 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 of course not. But so it is interesting that it's like she seems like an absolute mess too, and she's like, "Well, I'm better off than you, and I don't trust you with my money." Meanwhile, it seems like they're both really bad with money. Oh yeah, but also, I mean, the line about you should hide your drug use better means like, okay, so she's probably doing the she's same doing stuff. the she's same just, drugs she's just yeah. like more able, able to keep uh, stay more stable mm-hmm. while she's literally. doing it literally it is crazy that adam is like i'll pay for your school uh, if you had a boyfriend for one month two weeks and they were like i'll i'll pay for you to go to get a therapy <laughs> degree that's crazy that's love also what does adam say like that like, jess would be such a good therapist because she tells the truth and yeah, like, she's all- a truth teller <laughs> I'm like, I don't know I if that's what that's want about, her babe. My I can't imagine. Would you want Jess as your therapist? No, <laughs> I would. I I need a real bitch that's gonna tell me like it is. But so I always choose like an older therapist who's real and will tell me the truth. You know, like I want someone older and more stable. She's an old soul. <laughs> no, come on. Yeah, she's already divorced. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's been through so much. Was Marnie not in this episode? Marnie's no. on this app. We're, you know, she's busy in the next one. Oh, yeah, she's right. real she's busy. She's gallivanting. Yeah. Yay. Um, Adam and Jess are really honeymooning. Yeah, you know, at this point in relationship, it's like, um, it, Hannah doesn't know yet. They're just really like falling Oy. in love with each other. I mean, it's nice that they're actually like not in the same city right now, so we can just like really see that like there actually is a real love between Jessa and Adam. Like that really does come through, especially like, Adam willing to like sacrifice all the money he made from a big pharma commercial to so, like <laughs> buy therapy for uh, Jessa. But, but we really are establishing that all the men in this show love grand gestures. Kind of a point yeah. we've come from the past, but again, another giant grand gesture, which is like you're not gonna have student debt. It's like awesome. That's really cool. Zooming out on the evil of it all, I am happy to see Jess uh, feel really loved and adored by somebody. Yeah. Because the last time you see in a relationship is with Ace, who was using her as a prop to get Mimi Rose Howard back. 
Oh, so, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, <Who knows>? <laughs> literally <laughs> never forget MRH. Um, so it is kind of nice to like see her be loved for one. She she needs that. But we need that. We all need we need that. Uh, right. Would your boyfriend pay for your therapeutic degree? I wouldn't ask him to. But if he know. offered, if he offered, I mean, honestly, I don't think I would like to feel in debt to anyone like yeah. that. Yeah, it's so Laura like Gilmore. You're like, <laughs> I don't have to go to a family dinner with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no Friday night dinners for me, please. Yeah. Wait, you're so right. Um, okay. What is your background on your John phone? Cena. It's me wearing a John Cena shirt on top of John Cena. Oh my God. Is this right. new? No, or no, was no, this no. pre-Oscar? I, I pre- way before. I think it was from like over two years ago. My boyfriend made it. I'm a huge John Cena fan. Wait, we he's, actually he's need my, We're back from the break. He's my celebrity crush. John Cena. Yeah. We just saw on the Oscars naked, but Claire has been a real one all along. All along. Phone, phone, phone. Zoom in on the Kate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is me wearing a John Cena shirt on top of a shirtless John Cena. Um, like, like my John Cena obsession is to the point where like people, if they see at the thrift store, a John Cena shirt, they will buy it and give it to me. <laughs> um, but my boyfriend made this when I hit a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Aww. Aww, that's so sweet. That's so funny. You're like, congrats on a hundred thousand followers. Here's a meme. <laughs> it gets, it gets so many comments. People ask about it all the time. Of oh my God. Course. It's like, it's like an anime body in the background and a little <laughs> girl kind of floating. He's the style. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's truly it's it seems like what the inside of a dream looks like. Oh yeah, my dreams. Yeah, your dream. Wait, what? Why John to Cena? You that John Cena <laughs> came into your life in such a large way. I just like he's so hot. What is he from? WWE, amongst mm. other things. Okay, he's a wrestler. I'm not into wrestling. I'm just into John Cena. But I mean, I do. I also love The Rock. Like I love like a gigantic muscular mm. man right yeah i loved what's it called the Oscar. with madison pettis <gasps> the tooth fairy right no no no, no, no. no. the game plan the game plan oh yeah oh my god and she's he's allergic to cinnamon oh my god that was Wait, huge I, <laughs> that was that huge. Is a big plot line. oh my god that was so major i feel like we do have to protect john cena because he's like the last metrosexual in hollywood <laughs> You know that I mean? can't be true. <laughs> it's not true, but he's the last like bulky. Me- he's like the first and last metrosexual bulky. With the sweep of Ozempic, he is the last bulky guy we'll see for a decade. Literally. literally. For a decade. Period. I know, because the other metrosexuals are kind of Timothy Chalamet. So to have John but Cena. But he's like, you know, a little. He's tiny. Wayfish. He's wave. so wave. He was born to be metro. You know who we have to discuss? Asian pop star Yoshi. So in the sh- in real life, the character of Yoshi is like literally like the Harry Styles of Japan. No, no, he's an actor. He's a- he's like Robert Patterson. It's a comparison. Oh, he doesn't say. Is Robert Patterson famous? Robert Patterson's for- really famous from yeah, Twilight. Yeah, like from Twilight. Right, right, right. He- yeah, so Lena Dunham compares. Sorry, not to say no, no. He's not. Doesn't sing. He's a very famous actor in Japan. But when they booked him as the role, they didn't know he was so famous. They just loved him based off his talent. And then they discovered he was really, really famous in Japan. Yeah, I think I watched like the behind the episode or something where she talks about this. Yeah. It's so fun that Abigail has that line that kind of like hints towards that by being like, he literally looks like a like a famous the pop star. S- pop star. Yeah, yeah. And Shosha's like, totally, but he's actually just Yoshi to me. <laughs> <laughs> do we support Yoshi and Shoshana? I mean, do you remember Suit Mogul? No. Okay, it's the actor Jason Ritter who's yeah. married to Melanie Linsky in real life. Okay. But he owns a soup company and Shosh is briefly dating him and they're doing long distance while she's in Japan but then she loses her job and she calls him and she realizes she doesn't want to go back to him and so she makes out with Yoshi yeah, instead. Yeah, so she doesn't go back well, she- and now she's kind of living in Japan working at a cat cafe. Second yeah, biggest in yeah, Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I laughed out loud about the line about the, they're going to lose their virginities to each other. Yeah. yeah. I was like... <laughs> it's so funny. In tears. Oh, she's like, are you sad? Oh, wait, you're fully crying. crying. That's so... A.D. Bryan has so many amazing lines in this episode. 
This is such a quotable episode and I didn't see it coming. When I sat down to watch it, I wasn't expecting every line to be one that I needed to memorize for the rest of my life. I know. For me, it was really the the one about the book and the wine. The best morning ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love the one line that sat with me for years. And I always think about this because it's so poignant to our lives sometimes. Where Hannah's like, uh, her mom's like, are you going to brush your teeth? She's like, no, I'm a morning brush. I guess feel really hard at it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I don't brush my teeth at night, I'm like, I'm a morning brusher. <laughs> I don't do it often, but when I do, that's the thought. <laughs> You'd be <lie>. like, caveat. <laughs> caveat. <laughs> um, There's a footnote in my brain to this episode. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Shoshana Cat Cafe, love or hate? Yeah, well, the whole thing about cat cafes is like, where did they come from? Where did they go? Where I did- think they're still a thing in... In, in Japan, in Japan, but I, we have I, them here. I only know about them because I see TikToks about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to a dog cafe? <laughs> no, and I've never been to a cat cafe because I'm allergic to cats. I'm allergic to cats. I'm allergic. I'm also but... cat sitting right now. There, my, like, <laughs> Wait, my, friend, my friend, Clara, who, my friend who lives around the corner from me, um, had an emergency and had to go home to LA, and so I'm cat sitting for them. You are so brave and resilient. Yeah, and like the cat's lonely, so I have to like pet it and then I like go home and have to shower <laughs> and take a Benadryl. <laughs> like coughing into a mess. It's <laughs> like yeah, I'm like just like and then Wearing after an every pet, I go I go wash my hands. <laughs> but that the worst so part, fun. the litter. Oh yeah. yeah. Gross. <sighs> I can't, but if Pretty Litter wants to sponsor us, we are open to the opportunity. <laughs> um, yeah, Shoshana's down, but I have questions about her work visa, but we don't oh, have to get into it. That's really funny. I'm like, Shosh, you lost your job. You got to fly home. And what the hell is Abigail doing there? They were just like, we need to get AD Brian in the mix. I think she's there for work. But she's like never been there famously. Can you, can you remind me? What was the job? Marketing, marketing for something okay marketing. gotcha we'll like never vague, know what vague, vague. Okay. someone left a comment where it's like shoshana in japan is better than emily in paris and it's like that's all awesome. <laughs> they should have done a spinoff <laughs> i do love shoshin abigail having a day about the town yeah because you know what it's they do all those classic things that you would only do when you're tourist friends in town where it's like we're gonna go to our feet eaten by fish today <laughs> And you know what I mean? It's like only stuff you would ever do if your friend's visiting New York. You would do those same things. It's like that's the same experience they're having here. Yeah. yeah. And I love. E, I, I love it. It's also crazy because we know that Abigail's character is about to fall in love with Ray Polshansky, kind of Shoshana's famous ex. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that storyline. Well, we have a, like a season. Yeah. We have a season until it happens, but it's just like <laughs> I was watching this episode and that was all I could think about. Oh, I was like, this is foreshadowing what could come. Literally. Yeah. Literally. I mean, the whole, I think it's really interesting for, we were talking about this earlier when you said, well, girl, what girl are you? Where it's like Shoshana has such a brave face. Like her whole thing is like she is like a girl. I'm going to cut my way through this world and live by my own clock. And like she did something so purely for herself, which is like stay in Japan, go to this work at this cat cafe, like live this life that she thought was best for her. She finally found what she said in an earlier episode. This place feels more like family than like our home than my home actually does. But now she's actually here like, and she's so lonely because she's so fish out of water. She's like, if one more person hits me and bows, I'm going to fucking kill someone. And it's like, yeah, it is so I being a foreign person in any country, it's like even if you really are formulating your life, it is most it can be so lonely cuz culture can be so different. I like that she yeah. tried it though. Right. I feel like that's re- like you said that's brave. Gross. And yeah. when you're 22, you have to be brave. Literally. It's like this thing every time people go to London, they always think that like there London is a great place to go from America, like you're not going to be lonely because it's they speak English, but the cultural shock is so big for people. So actually the biggest rate of people moving to a foreign country and coming back to the United States is from uh, the UK because they think it's not going to be as much of a cultural shock speak than it is. Exactly. They think it's be more similar than it is. Just like it's it's like the same things happening here and a little bit of regard like she thought she was adjusted to culture, but actually it's still so shocking and new. And she can't, like, get her footing. Like, she has a boyfriend that she's, like, lose her virginity to, quote, unquote. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I, like, uh, what made me laugh so hard about that is, like, imagining her end of that. Like, what she would have to experience. It would be, like, a nightmare. 
<laughs> like actually so disturbing. Literally the whole her whole plot up until this point is like her trying to lose her virginity. Yeah. And now she's in Japan, she now has to pretend she didn't lose it. It's like what do we watch for the last four seasons four of seasons, her yeah. trying to lose her V card? Yeah, literally. It's like I moved to Canada and I remember being like, it's not gonna be that much different. And then it's like everybody there is actually a little British and that they're like really like closed off in a specific way and like <laughs> um <gasps> like a little bit like I don't know, not as down to clown, I guess. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, I was like growing up in Texas, a pretty bubbly person. And then I got to Canada and was like, everybody thinks I'm crazy. And yeah. I'm like very like honest or like a sarcastic kind of like realness that they were like, this isn't allowed because they're obsessed with politeness <sighs> there. So I was like a lot of like getting in trouble accidentally and me being like, I feel trapped by this country. That's why I left. <laughs> LOL. Love our Canadian listeners. Love. What's that one place called? Um, Alberta. Hey, girls. <laughs> Is there a girl there? Calgary. We've got some Calgary listeners. We love, and- you. We love you more than the rest. Yeah. And actually, one of my favorite friends from college, Sydney, is from Calgary. So shout out to her and her community. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, have you been in New York forever? Well, Pretty much, yeah. Like, I mean, I went to NYU, so I've lived here for six and a half years, and I lived in New York State my whole life before that. My parents moved to Connecticut, so my driver's license now says Connecticut. Okay. By the way, you don't have to keep it. So you're a world traveler. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Connecticut and New York. (laughs) Hell yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love Uh, it. Well, what do we think? So Shoshana's, are we hinting at she's going home? Yeah. You don't cry like that. Well, she says... I have to go home. That's yeah. When right. she, she excuses herself and says, sorry, I have to go home. And we're like, which home is she talking yeah. about? And I'm just like, by the way, Abigail is not um, well-traveled enough to be on her own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Shoshana, at least walk her to the McDonald's, Wait, girl. Who's paying for the bill? <laughs> <laughs> she kind of uh, died and dashed. Well, you know what? Um, Abigail can put it on the company card. She, yeah, Shoshana deserves that. Yeah. Yeah, I think being a manager of a cat cafe would be really hard because the way her manager talked to her, when you like, I'm like, how is she a manager now having like persuade a cat to cat? Did you see her during the episode? She's like, like cat whisper. It's like Oscar's back on the windowsill again. Can you go get him off? And I just go cat whisper to a cat in Japanese. Yeah, right. Hell. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know what time we- it is? Uh oh. Girl, Girl, get, get your, your Glock. Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire, fire time. time. What's your favorite utensil? Fork. Are you the voice of your generation or a voice of a generation? A voice of a generation. What does spring queening mean to you? Um, Getting rid of so many pairs of shoes that I don't wear. <laughs> What's your dream country to visit a McDonald's in? Japan. Are you a morning brusher or a nighttime brusher? Bofa. Bofa. <laughs> uh, would you divorce or stay with your gay husband? Stay. Do you think Brad can be a nut? Yeah, there's bread made from almonds. <laughs> oh, you're oh. so paleo. Paleo. <laughs> I'm gluten free. I know all about bread being a nut. Oh Ooh. my god. Uh, can you wellness yourself too hard? Totally. Would you have sex with Jess's sister? No. Slay, you killed. I would have sex. What? What's her name again? What did we? Mimi. 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 We landed on Mimi. Minerva. <laughs> it, we didn't ever touch on the fact that Mimi hugging Adam at the meeting. It's like we all know one girl like that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, there was a girl who did that to my boyfriend, and then she got involved in some TikTok <gasps> drama with some other some other um, girl's boyfriend. I was like, Wait, oh. do dish? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I like immediately. No. <laughs> Wait, that's yeah. The way she was hugging and wearing that top, it was like she wanted a little bit more. I yeah. love when girls wear tops that um they're like knitted out of something. But she wore before it was like a trend. So it's like that was so fun. It is so fun to see Mimi because we're always like, Jess is so hippie. She's such a free spirit. And it's like, bitch, you thought. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> She's actually studious. She's studious. Yeah. Mimi's the wild one. Mimi's the wild one. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we have one last segment. 
that, that outfit, outfit in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's, That's when we compare Brooklyn then versus Brooklyn now. And I just want to say you're kind of a fashion girl. I'd go as far as to say. Yes, I'm a Manhattan fashion girl, I guess. You can, we can do right, that Right, so too. that outfit in Manhattan. Manhattan. <laughs> um, what have you noticed culturally is different from 2010 to now? I mean, in the episode, but also in general. Um, that's a great question. Um, I honestly think like with the rise of like TikTok fashion and like I feel like the way like all of Hannah's clothing is like ill fitting. I know like that was an intentional part of costume design, but I actually feel like that has gotten a little bit better since since that era. But I do rem- like I mean, I was wearing pants that were just so tiny on me back then. Like the era <laughs> of skinny jeans, like yeah. oh my god. Um, but like I feel like oversized is more of a thing with mm. fashion. Um, I did, I did respect, like, there was such TikTok girl energy with Hannah wearing a bathing suit when the situation (laughs) did not fall for it. Like, just like the impracticality, like, I'll be, I'll be wearing a bathing suit as a top and like that, that's just what happens. That bathing suit is so specific to that time period. The monokini, I love wearing monokinis. Where it goes hourglass in the middle. Yeah, well, I actually like have a bunch of those. Like that, yeah, but I, I, I'm not kidding. I wear them as tops. So like her, (laughs) her doing that, wearing, I don't know what I wear it on a hike no probably a recipe for a yeast infection Lime. right but um yeah i do do that and so you i were like, like i am being represented in the media also like i mean i'd probably wear pants or shorts with it but like i've been known i've been known to wear <laughs> like i have like a kind of booty short bottom mm-hmm. monokini that i do wear out like like butt been out known. <laughs> yeah i've been known to do that <laughs> I love it. I, when you watch the show, can you just see how painfully 2013 it is? The first season was actually, for Crazy. me, the roughest. Yeah. Like, I, I watched that and I was like, oh, I kind of dress like that too. <laughs> <laughs> it is like when I was 15 in a peplum top, I was just like, this is what people wear. It was like there Literally. was no understanding that it's like it's what people were wearing at the time and that it wouldn't be like that forever. Oh, yeah. I think I was more of a trend follower back then. Now I like just do my own thing. Now you're and free. And if I wanted to wear a peplum top, I'd make sure it was a cute one and I'd make it, <laughs> I'd make it, I'd make it timeless. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I'm like, there if anyone so would know how to make words. a problem top. You're like, if I was going to wear a problem top, it'd be a cute one. I'm going to make it timeless. <laughs> That's such a beautiful sentence. You know, like you, like now my, my sentiment is like, you know, I can wear whatever I want, but I want to make it me. Like as long as I style it in a way that feels authentic to me, that's that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that's that. And that's <laughs> that. Well, you know, it's a really fun part of this episode. Um, what's her name? Holly. When she's wearing Nike leggings like that with the interesting pattern. Where like they don't go all the way down, they kind of hit right above. Oh, and, like, the like, capri pattern like, leggings. Yeah, the capri pattern leggings. I stayed there, dust collected. I the I still have cheetah print ankle. Like it's what I wear to my Pilates classes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sometimes wear well, some but of that. It's to a the gym. Nike print, like in this specific. I time, had very similar leggings. No, every girl did. Yeah. Every girl did. It was a yeah. big part of girl. I wear them with like a little tied up t shirt <laughs> to school. Well, I feel like we were alive for kind of the rise of a very specific type of athleisure. Yeah. That didn't exist in the Jane Fonda time. Literally. Yeah. Not that we're out of the Jane Fonda times. I want to say that she's still in her moment. Um, but you know what I but mean. But you know what? This show is now catching up to a time where like I really remember fashion too. Like the earlier seasons, like it's something that it's kind of lost in me 2012. Like what we were wearing was so like specific to middle school or early high school. But now it's catching up to like the later years, like when I was really conscious of what people were wearing. So now all these outfits like have an extra kick of pain to them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Shoshana's little accessories. What did I? Oh, I wrote down <laughs> Abigail's top knot in the beginning of the yeah. episode. <laughs> I, I is, was there. I was there for that. <laughs> there was something so 2015 happening there, especially with like the side bangs being pinned back, like in the front, like. And it's like the messy top knot. Like, I was there. Um, the girls at my high school. It's like there were some <laughs> girls who could do the top knot so good, and some who couldn't. And it's like everybody knew who was who. I, I was good because I had really thick hair, so it, people would be like, "Oh, you're wearing like a donut bun thing, or like a sock bun thing." And I'd be like, "No, that's all me. It's <gasps> all fucking real." Uh oh, you were the luckiest girl. Truly. I, I was the same way. Yeah, you you have hair very similar to my hair. Yeah, and my dance team, we'd had to wear like these low buns and the donut 
thing that I would use. My hair would be so thick that the donut would just be too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's so funny. I think another really good example of like what doesn't really exist in the same way is like the language I used to write the pamphlet for this place they're going to. Like all this girl the boss girl boss language. empowerment language. Yeah. yeah. Like puns around like vaginas or like every other sentence. It's yeah. So powerful. Let like your inner goddess out. It's like something like I can't. But okay, it does exist. I do. I get a lot of cursed Instagram Reels content. And <laughs> those people still exist, <laughs> but they're just not. So, like we're making fun of them, and but like they're they're not aware. Yeah, they don't know. They don't care. Also, they don't know about the counterculture surrounding them. Yeah. yeah. They don't know, but well, they're just on tap. Then, like, they really formulated their idea of what culture was in this specific time of almost girls. So that language is still huge for them because they didn't realize that it's like post ironic. Yeah, yeah, they stayed there. The it is so like everything that happens on their treat. It seems like there's a self awareness to that kind of behavior now that we've had this self care capitalism moment it's like we're also like nuanced in like the different practices but then like walking around and it's like lead with your belly or like lead yeah. like whatever or like lead with your cunt and lead with your cunt <laughs> um what else do they do they're like dance and be free and it's just like <laughs> the sequence of like hannah and lorene dancing free oh with all the divorced women is so all hands on deck all hands on deck and hannah's dancing free do, do, do. oh I cannot that wait song. to clip it and post it online. <laughs> wait, what song? I wrote it PM down. What Mia? song did they play in this episode that actually I remember at the time had an impact? Um, I hope it's all hands on deck. No, no, that no, no, song. no. Closer it. to fine. They, they play. Well, also they play, I think, a cover of Life on Mars. Oh, mm. really? Yeah, at the very end, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, isn't that famously by a man, but they had a yeah, girl Yeah, it's cover? by David Bowie, but they did, they did a girl cover by, she's like, I think she's Norwegian. She's like this, this artist, Aurora? Aurora, yeah, uh, or something like that. Yeah. Um, but also they they play like a acoustic version of Closer to Fine, and I feel like th- maybe there's another episode where they played like the actual version of Closer to Fine, or maybe it was this episode where I remember back in the day when I watched it, like I got really into Closer to Fine by the Indigo Girls. I love that. <laughs> I love to be 14 watching a TV, like, especially this show. I mean, all the songs are so good. Whenever I work, I literally put on, like, girls' soundtrack. Oh, yeah. I remember there's that episode around the campfire. I think it's in the next season where they play She's So High. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, She's so high. That's so good. Hi above me. Uh, I can't (laughs) believe this is my last note on this episode, but I just finished a Mindy project. And the last season, they're blasting Beyonce songs. Like, they knew they are going out, so they went out with a bang. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, the music budget this season is going to be three million. (laughs) I love it. Shout out HBO for having that music budget. It's so important. It really makes a show. Music is so, well, it really does. It really helps. What was that one? You know, um, the girl from w- Riverdale. <laughs> what is Which her Lily name? Lily Reinhardt. No, the Burnett one, and then she was in a movie with Maya Hawk, the girl you went to middle school with. Um, <laughs> do Revenge. It's I like a niche what. teen movie with like a flip second half. But all I remember watching it was like, this is a bad movie, but. The music they got on this film goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we love music. It made the film. And I think we love this episode. I know. This is perfect. We nailed it. We nailed it. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me. It was so fun to rewatch Girls with a Purpose. Yeah. Well, you were, doing we're bringing that we're letting you microdose your college experience <laughs> actually. <laughs> Where can people find you if they're addicted? Um at Tiny Jewish Girl on Instagram and TikTok and I guess YouTube because I'm coming out with a little podcast and a little makeover Ooh. show and so I will be more active on YouTube. Wait, soon. what kind of makeover show? Um like, you know, just like self expression makeovers like like people who like you know how most makeover shows are kind of the vibe where it's like oh you're so weird and you stand out here's how to blend in it's gonna be the opposite <laughs> of that that's so funny <laughs> yeah okay so tune into youtube to see that um that's such important work i can't wait to watch that <laughs> I love we can that. watch with a purpose yeah we'll watch with we're we'll, gonna watch with a purpose we're gonna do our gallatin thesis on it <laughs> so watch out world um we're gonna be back next week thanks for tuning in we'll see you next week Peace.